Welcome to Alpha Wolf Capital. I'm Tim and I want to personally thank you for stopping by. This channel is designed to help small companies, both public and private, gain exposure with potential consumers, investors, even partners. Take, for example, today's guest. CEO Ordan Trebelsi from Supercom. Supercom is on a mission to revolutionize public safety worldwide with innovative electronic monitoring technology and complementary services. Here at Alpha Wolf, we talk about finding companies that can have a positive impact on humanity. This is most certainly one of those companies. This is a monitoring service that should be used everywhere because their technology far surpasses anybody else's on the market and their technology can save lives. It can also help us maybe look at things a little differently and not put people who are nonviolent criminals into prison where they become institutionalized, but maybe let them still continue to contribute to society and monitor them. But I'll let Ordon tell you more about Supercom in just a moment. This is not to be taken as investment advice. I am not a certified financial planner. This is for education and entertainment purposes only. I encourage everyone to do their own due diligence. Hey everybody, Tim from Alpha Wolf Capital coming at you with a follow-up. This is a long overdue follow-up, uh, but it's a company that I love because it's, uh, it is a technology that makes so much sense to me and it, it literally uh, can save lives. And domestic violence is, is, a, is a big issue. Um, and what I'm gonna let I'm gonna let Orda explain exactly why his his product is so much more superior than what else is out there. But uh, and it's not just not just that portion; it's the technology itself, right? Orda from Supercom CEO. Uh, it's been probably over a year since he and I have, have spoken, but I've been seeing your name a lot in the news there, Orda. Supercom's making some moves, huh? <laughs> yeah, we've had exciting times in the last uh, year or two. Uh, things are very busy here. And uh, thanks for having me again, Tim. It's uh, it's always a pleasure to get on the channel and talk with you. Yeah. Uh, so give for those that don't know, give everybody a little bit, little background on Supercom and, and then how, you know, you're a young guy. <laughs> and how, um, you, how you became... Yeah the CEO of Supercom, and, and you've done a lot. I mean, you came into a pretty tough situation, right? Right, right. It's, uh, so I've been in the company since, uh, actually I was 28, right after I finished business school uh, in New York at Columbia University. And at the time I was just uh, helping kind of stabilize the company because on the pink sheets, we had to bring uh, hundreds of investors to relist the NASDAQ capital market. We did that in September, 2013. Afterwards, we raised money to acquire a competitor, OTI's uh, EAD division. Since then, I grew the operations in the U.S. to over 10 million uh, annual revenues and uh, stabilized you know, our product line of tracking defenders in the U.S. Uh, three years ago, I moved to Israel to help with the global operations because at the time, the company was uh, experiencing five years of uh, decline in revenues, uh, significant debt and cash burn. And we were trying to make some changes that worked very well in the U.S. We're trying to apply them to the global market for this for the company, that including uh, Europe, uh, Africa, and South America. So I moved to Israel at the time, and since then, uh, <laughs> it's been a very exciting uh, kind of shift in the company to where we are today. Okay, and and let we're going to talk about where we are today in terms of growth, but before we go there, kind of give everybody a. a exactly what you do. Good. So Supercom, uh, we're, we're an electronic and digital security company that serves governments around the world. In our in our past, we were doing biometric ID cards and passports. Over the past, let's say, five to seven years, we've shifted strongly towards uh, offender monitoring and public safety. So our main focus is creating these ankle bracelets, uh, new and improved state-of-the-art, new generation ankle bracelets with long battery life. You don't have to connect your leg to the wall anymore. 
to help with public safety. So we help uh, people uh, on house arrest. We help take people out of prisons to, to programs that can reliably track them. And what we've innovated and focused on in recent years, which is really creating a paradigm shift in large new programs around the world, is domestic violence solutions. We have a solution where we put a bracelet on the offender. So if someone hits his wife or his children, he gets a bracelet on his leg almost immediately once the police arrive and see this, and he can't come close to them because their phone will alert if he comes anywhere close. So we, we help with domestic violence immediately uh, until everything goes through trial, until the person's convicted. We have a solution to keep him away and to stop the violence in the meantime. So that's been really changing the paradigm, really helping thousands of people, if not tens of thousands of people, um, every year. Um, and we are expanding that more into more and more areas around the world and making a bigger impact and bigger change. So what makes your product unique is not that you just, you notify authorities. Let's say, I don't know, I guess it's, it would be a mile or two mile radius that they have to, you know, stay away from, away from. The, the X or whatever, right? They, yeah. if they go into that two mile radius or whatever it is, you notify the authorities, but you also notify the potential victim. victim. Yeah, it could be two miles. It could be five hundred yards. I mean, it depends what what what's defined by uh, by the government, specific government running the program. But the idea is that yes, I mean the the, the victim, usually the female, um, needs to feel comfortable that they can complain that there's going to be some sort of change immediately. So they can, in Romania, which we. The project we won two years ago, 15,000 offenders simultaneously, 15,000 bracelets. It's one of the largest projects in the world in electronic monitoring, and certainly the largest in domestic violence. Uh, we won that as a new product, program for them. Over there, when people come to the, when police officers come because of a complaint, they see damage on the face, you know, obvious domestic violence uh, signs. They put a bracelet on the person immediately, and until there's trial, until it goes through the court, that person, that offender, uh, cannot come close to the victim. Uh, if he comes close, her phone alerts her. And she could stay away. Uh, she sees him coming close. She actually sees a little map of him approaching. Yeah. Little, you know. <laughs> and also, uh, the police get to get a notification. And so the person's already in trouble, already at risk. He certainly doesn't want to create more trouble for himself by coming close to the victim. And it works. And it works really well. Um, and we're the first company to do it in that way. Because until now, other companies maybe had a solution where you need to charge your leg every week or every day, and it's a clunky bracelet. It's hard to ask someone to wear a clunky bracelet that they have to charge every single day before. I'm not even convicted yet. You know, the person's like, why, why do I need to do all this? So when it's a bracelet on your leg, it's small, lightweight. You don't have to charge it. It's not going to bother you. It's not going to interrupt your life. You put it on meanwhile, and it just makes sure that you're far away. That's all. And it, it keeps right. it that way. So you think about the prison populations, you think about nonviolent offenders, right? Um, yeah. The taxpayer, after prison, the, after the, prison. The, the taxpayer pays for them to be sitting in prison doing nothing when actually that doesn't help the prisoner to, I mean, you know. Uh, you're saying it right. It helps, I, them, it helps I, them become a better criminal. It's like a, it's like a, it's like a university for uh, criminal activity when they go into prison and uh, especially the misdemeanors. Someone did something small, you know, he shoplifted a few things uh, for whatever reasons. He goes into a facility, he's placed with uh, people who have done grand theft and planned, you know, large scale operations of theft or murder or other violence or rape, and he's in that environment. Whether he's a victim of, of that kind of violence or whether he hears about it, he he learns and he's adapting to. A new mindset, which he maybe didn't have before. And then when he comes out of prison, you know, he can't find a job. People and his friends, you know, are far away from him. So it's, he's either likely to join a gang or do something else. Uh, but if you're not helping him, then you're just you're just amplifying the problem that was there in the first place. A small problem became a big problem. Right. We came to, to make that change. We we not only help him come out of prison in a step by step fashion. He's first time he's in house arrest. And then he's on GPS monitoring, which saves tons of money. You're talking about taxpayer funds. There's over $80 billion uh, in the U.S. spent every year just monitoring these prisons. Uh, and even though they monitor the people in the prisons and operate them, there's still a high recidivism rate of 75%. So anyone that comes out of prison within five years comes right back in. So some, something in the prison program didn't work. It's, they're coming right back and just inflating the prisons. 
there's no room, uh, and people aren't doing anything uh, except for learning from other criminals. They could be at home working, studying, raising their kids, helping their parents, helping other people, and they're not doing any of that. So it's a much more effective solution cost-wise and effective-wise and in terms of actually caring about what's happening to your community if you give people, people on alternatives to incarceration, which is what we're doing here with, uh, with the bracelets and the house arrest programs. Right. I mean, try. how about being a society of second chances, right? I mean, it's, it's. Uh, I think people like to say that we, we like to give second chances, but especially in this day and age, I think social media is, um, you make a mistake and people will literally jump on that and that's how you get defined for the rest of your life, right? I mean, it's, it's uh it's pretty brutal actually <laughs> right yeah it's 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 uh especially now everything is in forged forever somewhere on some website and some profile uh on some google search but here you know we we see uh, offenders when they come out ex-cons they look for a job no one wants to give them a job we developed in our company you know it's vocational training programs we help them with welding with truck driving and other other types of work that helps them come into a niche where they do hire people with, which are ex-cons. We help them find a job. We help them with the practice for interviewing. We help them re-enter society. We know that if they get, you know, kind of spit out into society without any hand-holding and support, they're going to come right back in. And there's two ways to look at it. On one, there's a second chance where, you know, you give someone a second chance and that, that could be a, you know, People have different opinions on that. Some want to give a chance, some don't want to give a chance. I have a lot of these conversations with investors, and they say, you know, these guys, I don't care about them. I don't want to help them, and help or not help. You know, that's a, that's an issue I don't really get into too much. But there's different opinions, of course. But from a practical point of view, unless you're going to take these people and put them out to Mars, I have Mars here, right there. One of the <laughs> planets, unless you take them out, uh, then they're part of our society, and they're part of our society. They're going to come back, and they're going to hit your kids or worse. So, you know, if you have a, you know, 17-year-old, 19-year-old, 20-year-old kid, he still has a long life. He's still going to be with us for a long time, hopefully. Uh, if you're not helping to stabilize his behavior and make him kind of be part with the fabric of society, he's just going to be, you know, a wild comic causing issues nonstop. So he'll go into prison, become more wild, get more violent, come out, do more problems. So, again, we're not shipping anyone to other, other planets, to the best of my knowledge. Uh, so they're in, they're in our society today. So we really want to help them. And it's not just a, a matter of uh, of compassion to them, which I think is very important as well, but it's a matter of practicality. We have a lot of people in society that are, that are acting well and they're acting properly. We don't want a few bad apples to kind of ruin it for, for everyone else. So in order to reach public safety, to have healthier societies, to have healthier you know places and communities for all of us, uh, we need to work on exactly these verticals that we're doing at Supercom. That's why our work is so important. I believe, and also people here at Supercom, we have over 100 employees, you know, in the U.S. and Israel, and you know, it's 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 a very different feeling uh, what we're doing here than in some of the roles that they've had in other companies in the past. Right. Yeah. I I I, I always I think about uh, I think about a lot of things actually. <laughs> the, the society is. Uh, I mean, look, it, it's it's a tough and challenging thing. We do the same things over and over again, expecting to have a some kind of a different result. And that's the very oh, definition yeah. of insanity, right? I mean, it, when yeah, yeah. If something's not working, it, it's probably not a bad idea to try something different, right? Like maybe combining, you know, welfare with education, because I think really, if you're born into, a, I mean, I mean, I I didn't grow up in a great neighborhood. My mom got divorced. My mom, and my parents got divorced very young, when I was very young, and uh, it was rough on the family. And my mom was a single mom with three boys. You know, <laughs> rough go, man. And uh, yeah. you know, easy. you look, you look yeah. at, it's like um, Sometimes you have, you're not you're just not in control of of your where you are where you're what you're surrounded by right you don't know anything better you don't know anything different and that's why I think combining education look we'll pay for your education right 
but you're going to have to go to school. You're going to have to learn this trade. You're going to have to learn so that so that you can be have a decent paying job and be self sufficient, right? I mean, I've I've gotten a lot of push, I've gotten a lot of pushback on that on that idea and concept, but you know, saying well, there's just a lot of people that aren't going to want to do that. Well, okay, fine, but what if what if fifty percent of the people that are on welfare want to do that, right? That they become, I mean, because they're not thriving on welfare. They're barely surviving on welfare, right? So <laughs> if we can get them a good job, get them a good education, I, that I think is a a plus all the way around, right? I mean, even if, even yeah. if it's only 25%, it's more than what's what are converting right now, right? It's completely it's a completely different state when someone's on welfare or when someone's independent actually contributing. And when someone's an ex-con, it's even more of an issue because they're likely, just statistically speaking, they're much more likely to recommit crimes uh, because of the way they've already people paint them in a certain way and it's self-fulfilling prophecy. They don't want to give them a job. They don't want to give them respect in certain areas. And you know, this is a, people just say, okay, nobody wants to give me a try and I'll do what I know how to do best. And that's what leads to problems. There, there have been studies, actually, where... Um ex-felons have gotten an opportunity to uh, work at a place and actually they wind up becoming your your top performers, right? They work harder because they're, because, and they're loyal because they've been given the opportunity to turn their life around, right? And I mean, I'm not going to say every single felon that, that's going to happen with, but I would think a good a good portion of them, you know, to be given the opportunity to to rebuild their life, they're going to be thankful to whoever it was that that gave them that opportunity. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, it, it happens. We see it many times. It's very beautiful. We help in our programs, and this is mostly California because in California we do what we call full service. But in, in much of what we do around the world, because we work, we have over fifty programs around the world that we want. A lot of it is, you know, we work with the national government and they do the, the programs on their own, not with us. In California, we have all the little counties that we do it for them. The national programs, we just provide them the technology and then the officers and, and the government has whichever programs they want. In Sweden, for example, they're allowed to go home on the weekends sometimes. So we, we have inmate monitoring with our technology. If they want to go home, we say, great, same technology, same bracelet, and just grab a phone and go home and you can track them at home. So... We're, a, we're able to to help them provide these programs that they want to do with the you know drinking and driving in California on a second DUI instead of going to prison we can many of the many lawyers try to ask for an alcohol program they put our bracelet on you know that we, that we work through partnerships and then for 90 days they show that they're not drinking alcohol then they're clean they're off so you know they, they, they give them away before go, before going to prison where all the bad stuff starts to happen we give them away to try to you correct themselves. You saw some of it's early intervention court, some of it's before they actually go in, and some of it's on the way out. So on both on both directions, there's many things that can be done to uh, make the process better. Right, right. So let's talk about. So you, you turned the company. I mean, the company was was losing. I mean, you were on a downward trajectory. What, what's the traje trajectory look like now? So yeah, a lot's changed over the last three years. Of course, not not just myself. I mean, I, I moved here to be the uh, the global CEO of the company from my previous role as the CEO of Americas. Uh, we brought on new people. We changed a lot of the the, the, the branding and the feel. We have a lot of more, let's call it, uh, younger, tech-savvy, tech-focused uh, types here before because the company was also serving business services like passport programs and driver's licenses in Angola and in Ethiopia and various areas of the world, the DNA was a little bit different. So we did change a lot of the, the DNA, a lot of the mission, a lot of the focus of the company, and we really shifted the business. Um, we call everyone here superheroes, for example. Uh, uh, it's super calm, and the employees are superheroes. When they come on, they get a they get a little, you know, a little doll for one of the superheroes of, of their of their of their favorite type. It could be Batman, it could be Spider Man. I have here Superman uh, next. <laughs> But, but it's, it's a very fun uh, experience. We're really trying to uh, 
you know, we're not superheroes, but we try to help the world and try to make an impact uh, through technology and through our ways. You know, we can't shoot lasers out of our eyes, but we can do other things that, uh, that with the help of uh, uh, proper technology, you can make a big, a big change. And we see impact on tens of thousands, not hundreds of thousands of people every year uh, without the eye lasers in the eyes, just with the technology and just with the hard work of the teams here. So, and that brings in results. And the company was, was uh, three, four years ago, it was declining revenues. And it was like, a, in a way, a fallen knife, it stopped it. Um, and we went from, I think, uh, all the way down to $11 million in revenues from over 20. And from 21, we shifted around. We grew at the beginning to 12 and a half million. Then we grew to 17 plus million. Then we grew to 26.6 million. This year was already experiencing growth over last year. Uh, is that just the top line? Our gross profit increased from, you know, the 30%. And now it's, you know, it's still volatile. But in the last quarter, it was 51, 50.1% our gross profit. Uh, our EBITDA has improved a lot. We're reporting many quarters where we have 400%, 500% and more growth in EBITDA. We're reporting record EBITDA, record profitability. Our net income was uh, over the, just the first nine months of this year versus last year, went from negative two and a half million to positive two and a half million, just the net income. And, and, and one of the metrics that I like to look at the most um, and we like to focus on is also cash, cash needs. So back then, three years ago, the cash burn was $9.7 million. This year in 2024, we don't have a cash burn. We're cash flow positive, uh, $1.2 million. That's, uh, you know, some investors don't like that because they want us to take money from them and yeah, fund the company with external capital. But we, we, if we're able to fund ourselves properly through the projects, of course, that is our long lasting goal. Uh, many projects require cash at the beginning and sometimes we need it. But uh, right now we're in nice stages and late projects where we're able to, you know, run with cash flow positivity and grow the business. We're continuously adding more projects. We just added three more in the U.S. with our new technologies uh, this last quarter, uh, New York and West Virginia and Maryland. And we won the Israeli National Project, which we've been, we've been waiting for. Uh, it's, been, it's been held by an incumbent for 18 years, and we were able to win in the, in the competitive RFP. Uh, thanks to our technology, thanks to our abilities, thanks to our partnerships. And now we're actually rolling that project out, and we think it's going to make a big impact in Israel as well, where we, the domestic violence laws changed a year and a half ago, now they allow for anger rights for domestic violence. So here where our headquarters are, we're going to see a lot of uh, the impact of our work. That's going to be exciting as well. So you've got, um, I mean, it's a recurring revenue model, right? And most, most, yes. It depends, okay. uh, depends on the customer. Sometimes they want to purchase some of the hardware. But a lot of our customers, especially in the U.S., they have a recurring revenue model. They uh, pay per unit per day, essentially. So okay. per each unit, you'll get between thousand and five one thousand five hundred dollars a year for leasing the unit, and that's including the hardware, including the phone, including the software, including the cloud, everything, and that's how we can generate nice margins in a recurring fashion. So if if somebody buys the equipment, are they do they still have to get the, do, do they still have to, I guess, the software portion? Uh, they still have, yeah, they still have to purchase the software, and pay for the software. An ongoing fashion, that's pay for maintenance, that's pay for access, but they might buy the hardware. Like uh, right. Romania, Romania, the project Romania, 30, 30, over $33 million project, they, they had a mix of you know leasing and paying for software in an ongoing fashion and maintenance, but also purchasing some of the equipment, which in a way is good and bad. It, it, it gives you cash faster because they're purchasing. It also kind of ties them to you because they purchased your equipment. Right. Um, <laughs> uh, but then the recurring fashion is not as easy to predict like in some of the other programs. But in the U.S., almost entirely you have recurring revenues. And the U.S. market is you know, three three to six times bigger than the European market. We had a huge, very successful win rate. We had 65% win rate in Europe. So one company, Little Supercom, won more than other nine players put together. We're 10 players in the industry mainly. We are one player who won 65%, other nine players won 35% on the RFPs that we bid on. So that was some great great success and we hope to do the same in the US, but now we're doing it in a much more massive scale because it's much more fragmented and spread out throughout different counties, different states. So the challenge in the in the US is that it's just kind of a state by state thing, right? Different states have different programs and different counties, different programs. And sometimes the same county has four programs, they have the probation program, the sheriff program, or the intervention court. So it is much more fragmented. 
making it potentially easier for companies who don't have great technology or don't have a great offering to still win projects. That's why we see a lot of players still have good revenues because they're able to, you know, just do sales, uh, good sales and put people on the ground. In, in Europe, it's much harder. To win in Europe, it's a national level win. It's much more discerning. You have six players on every bid and the government's assessing your technology and evaluating you, inviting you and checking you out. So if you could win in Europe, a national project, it should be easier to win the, the state and uh, and county projects, at least from the core offering. The rest is just investing in sales and doing operations effectively. You know, I don't know if you're aware of this, but we just had an election here in the United States. <laughs> <laughs> and there's going to be, uh, I, got, I have a feeling that there's going to be like a, a big deportation thing going on, right? There's the, the the election was actually the results of the election with Trump were very good for companies like ours. There's another company that's similar to us called Geo Group. Um, they're much larger, of course, and they do things for prisons, but they also do programs for offenders re-entering society, and they also do ankle monitoring because they acquired a company called BI. Their stock did very well in the last year. They're a larger company, and also like ours, uh, when, when the, after the election, quickly after we saw a little bump. And people believing that you know with the Republic, uh, Republican parties, um, it's gonna uh, the the essentially the the treatment for offenders, and it's gonna be much more expansive, and the use of alternatives and use of these programs is gonna be more effective. And regarding deportation, yes, it, on the border there's ICE, there's a ICE program that they have over hundred thousand people. I understand different detention programs. And that's gonna, you know, scale up, but then they're probably gonna be enforcing that in a, according to what they promised in a, in, a, in a more aggressive manner. That's gonna require more technology, more work, and more programs. You know, I, I'm just thinking about when they come in, because you know, so they actually were detained, and then they were let go, right? And some of these, some of these people that have come in, well, actually, quite a few of them have were violent offenders so yeah if they hadn't let him go because there was no place to, to put him because the prisons were too full right maybe the smart it's thing to do would have been to put an ankle bracelet on them so that we knew where they were they tried so they uh they've been trying to do that i don't know how important it was for them again this is different leadership of the government they tried. They did put bracelets on. They couldn't put everyone in detention centers. They didn't have enough room. They put bracelets. Sometimes they they followed it. Sometimes they didn't. Sometimes people ran away with the bracelets. You know, I am not involved in that program. I just hear from the outside. But I do know that that BI was not able to generate to build enough bracelets. They would reach out to other companies in the industry to help them because they, you know we during COVID really scaled up our production. We were able to reach a production of one thousand units per day. Which is important for the projects we won during COVID, and also for the projects we went after. Like, if a fifteen thousand project, fifteen thousand unit project requires a very fast development of, uh, of bracelets. So we scaled up our operations. We have redundancy. We can do things through through Israel mainly. We don't need to go through China, and uh, we're able to support rapid scale growth in numbers uh, when needed. And um, our projects in the past were a thousand units or a thousand five hundred. We tried to put, to look at Florida, for example. They wanted you to show a reference. You have a two thousand unit project. We didn't have it at the time. Remember, this is four or five years ago. Now we have fifteen thousand units. Uh, so I don't think we're going to have any issues uh, with those kind of requirements. The, the, these projects that we've been winning lately, the larger ones that we're doing very well, and they've been growing faster than, than scheduled. You see, these projects are ahead of schedule, and they're looking to add more. You know, the momentum is very good, and if we continue that, then we think other other counties, other states, other programs are going to see it, just like we're seeing now, and then we continue to expand. So, let, let's talk about let's talk about a, a couple of challenges you, that you still have. You, so, you, you recently when did you do the reverse? You did the reverse uh, December. It was uh, last. Was that uh, end of August, September? Just now. Okay. So you did a reverse, and you had to do yes. that in order to maintain listing uh, on the NASDAQ, right? It was a min dollar, a min one dollar rule, yeah. We did a reverse split, now we're at three dollars and 60, 80, I see it's jumping around. 
So I mean, now you're now you're actually at uh, you're kind of bouncing around between three dollars and four dollars, right? That's where you're. That's where the stock. Yeah. Is. Right. Bouncing around. Yeah. Lately, 350 or 380 before sometime. Yep. That's where we are now. Which is good. We have a good, we have a good uh, distance from the $1. And we still have good volume. So our average volume now is, uh, what, 140,000 shares a day with a free 350 stock. You're looking at, you know, over, uh, over, uh, I'm over half a million dollars a day just being traded ongoing without any special announcements. So you've got you've got um how many shares are outstanding now? Full roughly two million. Roughly two million. About fifteen million? Two million. Two million. Two million. Yeah. That's what I thought. Two million, yeah. right? Uh, which is yeah. which is very low. Uh that's that's not a lot of shares outstanding, right? That's no. I know that's a lot of people good. they hate the rivers. The, the, the reverse splits, but I guess I would say this. Yes, the reverse split, the process sucks. However, it, if the company is getting to a point where it's getting cash flow positive and your contracts are very long in duration, they last, and it's a recurring, Five, 10, 15. Yeah. It's a recurring revenue yeah. model, Eventually, you get to this point where that that positive cash flow is is becomes very predictable, right? Because it's a recurring revenue model, and then you've got um, additional services that you can add on, right? As as once you get a new customer, like you said, if if it's alcohol monitoring or it's it's there's different things that you can kick on for customers right yeah once you start with the uh, house arrest you add domestic violence you add gps monitoring alcohol monitoring and the contribution margin is up to 70 percent or more once you have the infrastructure there just adding more units so we have and we, and we see this we we had sweden sweden was the first pioneer for electronic monitoring in europe 24 years they had the same vendor we displaced them they started just with the ministry of justice then they put the swedish police then swedish juvenile Finland started, then expanded. Denmark started, then expanded. Every We see almost, I can't say every customer, but a lot of our customers, once they're happy, they add more programs. It saves them a lot of money. And it helps society. It helps public safety. And just, a, you know, all around a much uh, more effective solution for what they're trying to achieve. Right. So one of the overhangs that you you have it, or had, now at one point you were at, you had $40 million in in debt, right? Now you're, now you're at... We had thirty million 20. in that. Yeah, we had mid thirties. Um, now we're at twenty nine, thirty million. We paid off five million of that in the last year uh, through some stock issuances, and we had a nice, nice forgiveness. We had a one to one forgiveness with our, with our lenders. Basically, uh, you know, they were trying to incentivize us to pay earlier, and uh, for paying a dollar, you get a dollar forgiveness. That's how we essentially were able to 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 pay a lot of debt with issuing shares uh but we but the conversion is actually a significant premium up to 100 percent because of this this forgiveness factor so we did that we probably do that more uh, we don't know sooner or later it depends on the situation with the, with the various uh creditors but we have a we have a senior lender fortress which has been with us since 2018 and we have a good relationship with them they've delayed the maturity many times and right now, it's probably expected. Right now, the latest expectation is the end of 2025, but we expect it to be delayed uh, after agreement, after discussions with them towards 28 or 29. And they, you know, we're, we're not required to pay amortization to them, and we're picking the interest, uh, the interest to be paid, and that gives us a runway to work properly and to focus on our business, use our cash for growth. And then once in a while, we'll do some of these uh, conversions, but mainly we have the debt that's out there. And they're working with us to allow us to continue to grow the business. That's what we've been able to achieve 50, 60, and more percent growth over the last uh, last few years per year. So, you know, this is one of the things that, I mean, this is the frustrating thing for me, right? I mean, I see this company that's growing. I mean, you, you I think you've done a really good job of, of turning the tide for the company, right? Thank what, you. And what is, 
what is more meaningful to me is is the impact that your product does have when it comes to I, I mean, I just think it's a the whole thing is just a much more positive uh, path to travel than just taking people and throwing them in prison and having them become um, career criminals, right? Because they wind up. Be, <laughs> it's just to me, we we need to come up with a a, a better way, right? And uh, I mean, we've got, we're going to have a lot of stuff going on here in in the in the U.S. because there are so many people that came over that border that you know this is this is going to take years to clear up. Um, and and, and I, listen, I have nothing against immigrants. So everybody knows that I don't <laughs> illegal immigrants. Yes, I mean that is concerning. Not having any any background check, not knowing who's coming into the country, I think is. Is a pretty scary thing, right? So not just not just not just people from Mexico. There's a lot of people from uh, what they say. There's a lot of people that are you know extreme. Uh, some could be terrorists. Some could be other problematic that they come in from other areas of the world. They come to Mexico and they cross the border. Right. They don't want those people in the U.S. Uh, to do you know to create uh, terror and death and violence and you know, various things. So it, it is important to have these things monitored to be tracked. But our work in the past, and Supercon's been around since 1988, our work in the past was to help governments keep track of their people. In, in, you know, in Ecuador, they had 90 million identities for 15 million people. We did the biometric identification to help them with that. And it's a very important, it's very important for a country to be able to, to track, understand who's in the country and where. I'm not talking about track with the location, but at least know who's in the country. You know, they come right. now. And if you have a legal entry across a massive border, uh, that's where... Their problems can uh, can rise, right? Well, I mean, you know, the, and then the, the biggest thing for me, of course, is I mean, anytime I see the domestic violence, uh, see, so anytime you see a really bad outcome from a d domestic violence thing, where where it could have been prevented, it to me is I mean, that's almost it's just like almost inexcusable. Right, because there's a technology that would have stopped that from happening. Yeah, there's uh, and we've shown it time after time with our technology that we can effectively enforce restraining order and, and make sure that the victim is not close to the offender, or the offender is not close to the victim. And there's no reason I believe that everywhere in the world there should be laws like this to protect people from domestic violence. One of the worst things that could happen in our society, people getting violent to the people they love the most in their families. It, not only does it lead to death and to extreme damage, it also leads to emotional trauma, which then spreads on to other people in the community. A kid gets beat up by his father, and later he goes and beats other kids up, and they have trauma and they have issues. So, you know, it's it's a core significant, I see at least, a core significant problem in society, and we should be addressing it more and more and more focus. And it's a lot of just the, the politics that allows some some uh, countries do it, some not. But I think over time, every country needs to do it because unfortunately, it's everywhere in the world. It's not just certain. There aren't certain countries out there that are that are uh, you know, uh, let's say uh, um, uh, overcome this. Uh, we haven't we haven't seen people be uh, uh, seen regions in the world where they've had zero domestic violence. Maybe they have low numbers of complaints, but they're not uh, immune to it, and unfortunately. It is a problem uh, around the world in many places. Some places more, some places less. It's hard to track because people don't complain. But once you see a solution work, and once women see that they complain and the person is far away from them, they see it in their environment, they see it in their country, they see it on the news, then that's where you start to see the real numbers of domestic violence. That's where you start to see real change. So that I guess that's a question I have for you. So all the data that, I mean, you collect a lot of data, right? I mean, yeah. You know the impact that you have on on a community, right? I mean, so we've seen recidivism rates go down to thirty five percent from seventy five percent. But we said in the U.S., you know, every person coming out of prison is likely within five years uh, the seventy five percent chance that they'll recommit crime. We're able to reduce, reduce that with various programs. Like what we do is reduce the thirty five percent with domestic violence. It's newer. We've seen that there's been 
since the program, we've seen that the program Romania uh, has been active, we see more complaints. I mean, females are, are, are starting to believe. I say females, but it's mostly females, just because of the natural difference in strength and, and size. Uh, but it could be also the other way around. But we see that people are starting to see that it works, and they're starting to complain, and we see more complaints, and we see more arrests, and we see more of activity around this topic, which is very important. And hopefully other countries around the world will see the same. See, that, that, that's why I like this why I like your story, right? I mean, it's 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 about more than finding companies that are that could potentially provide a an above average mm -hmm. return on investment, but it's also about the impact that you have on humanity, which is in this particular case, I think significant, right? So Every dollar that goes into Supercom is uh, helping to uh, secure and help lives. I mean, the market cap itself, you ask me what life is worth, I think it's worth more than the market cap <laughs> right, that we have right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But also, uh, you know, our, our, our profitability, uh, you know, our, our uh, EBITDA for the first uh, three, uh, three quarters of the year, uh, 4.6 million, you know, that if you annualize it, that's close to, that's close to uh, profit to the market cap. Our cash on hand is over 6 million. Um, we do have debt, but the debt, as I said, is not uh, a cash requirement in the, in the near term. We're able to push that out into the future. And the company itself is just not getting evaluation, which reflects any of its metrics. For one reason or another, uh, that there's still a valuation gap, and we hope that over time that closes up. And some people are calling and reaching out and they're noticing this. I mean, when we won the, when the national project in Israel, uh, the, 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 the company that lost the project, G1, is public. They announced a loss. Many people that are following G1 came to us and they said, oh, look, this is a very nice project they had. And now it's moved over to Supercom. So we're expecting some good things coming up. You don't see that in the financials yet. We just won it. It takes time. But within six months, we hope to have a lot of deployment done. Uh, so Future has a lot of interesting uh, opportunities, whether it's projects we won or projects we're bidding on. There's a pipeline in Europe and in the U.S. that we're trying to continuously win more projects. Do you like what you do, Orda? Love what I do. Uh, I think I think from a, just a geeky technology uh, perspective, which is where I started as an engineer back in the Technion, uh, we're, we're working on some of the most cutting edge technologies, and we're working with with you know different antennas, different frequencies, different environments, different issues. It's very hard to track someone twenty four seven, especially people that are high sensitivity, like murderers or rapists. You want to have really reliable and effective tech. So we're doing some really cool things in sort of tech. We put over fifty million dollars. And that's, you know, very exciting and also effective, but it's, but it's beautiful to see technology change so many important things in the world, like domestic violence, like uh, violent crimes, like public safety. And it's beautiful to see how you can use technology in effective ways to do that. Um, our company is public and, uh, you know, on one hand, it's nice to be transparent and to share everything. Uh, on the other hand, sometimes it's, it's uh, frustrating to see evaluation it doesn't reflect uh, the, the financials and the growth. I and mean, we've had great growth over the last few years and we haven't seen much change to our uh, to market cap. Um, we understand that, that that's part of, uh, uh, of, the, of the life of being a public company. But the industry we think is important, it's $2.3 billion industry, but the impact we think is tenfold of that, the, the thing we could do for the world. And uh, we're becoming a leading player more and more in domestic violence and other regions of the world. We're making big changes. So we have a good team of people. Uh, we're doing good things and uh, excited about every day what we do. See, that's that's it, and that's where I think it's super important. Your 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 company is the only company that's suffering through the last forty months, right? I mean, it's it's, it's been a uh, just a bludgeoning of small and micro cap companies. I mean, it's just been constant pain. You have seven companies basically that are taking the markets to new highs, right? How sustainable is that? I mean, App, Apple is like, what, $3 trillion valuation? You can buy 17 countries, right, uh, for their GDP. I mean, wow. it, 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 and is Apple worth that valuation? I, I, you know, I don't want to get shot by anybody, but probably not. Uh, and same thing with NVIDIA. I mean, great, great technology. And, and it's, this is amazing stuff. Artificial intelligence and all that. It's fantastic. That's great. Do I think the valuation has gotten a little little out, out of whack? Probably. Um, and then I see companies that are doing things that 
make the world a better place, save people's lives, and their valuation of these, it's almost at stupidity levels. I mean, it's just like, or do you think that being in an Apple right now, it's going to double from where it's at? It's going to go to a $6 trillion valuation? I mean, if they cure cancer, it, it might. But uh, if uh, uh, you look at the small microcap companies that have navigated through a pandemic, navigated through supply chain issues, navigated through the fastest interest rate hike cycle in the history of mankind, you look at that, and these companies have, have navigated through a pretty challenging business environment. And in your case, you've been able to grow your business significantly. Would you say 150%? Is that what? Yeah, you grew 100% uh, in the last three years. Yeah, yeah. so Our top line. you're and, on uh, the right trajectory. Uh, how, how have you been rewarded? <laughs> uh by by a lingering uh, stock price um we we what when the interest rates went up but rapidly that's where our stock for no explained reason went down by 90 95 percent since then we were performing and outperforming and reaching record, record revenues record profitability record ebitda record uh, cash flow generation winning projects all around the world of you know against products, companies that are much larger than ours but the stock is not yet uh, adjusted uh, in the past in Supercom, and I was there. Uh, we had a we had similar numbers, not as good as we have now, actually. And we had a market cap of two hundred fifty million dollars, two hundred and fifty million dollars. Same company. We had one time revenues in Africa and South America, and the valuation was higher. So right now, listen, there's a big gap, big opportunity for those who are early on, and we'll see how it plays through over the next quarter. We continue to do our work, and it's in, especially when we're cash flow positive. Our reliance on the stock and things on the outside is less, and we're able to focus on our operations. But we still have the company, and we, we try to stay updated with investors, and we continue to report quarterly and to go to conferences. We started again, so uh, do you have any, here. Do you have any big RFPs right now? I mean, are, are there are, are there any big contracts that you're go, going we, after? We just won. We just won the national project in Israel, which is a very big one. Um, and it has potential to grow because it encompasses all of the electronic models in the country. So it starts with 1,500 units, but it will grow to, you know, we don't know how much, but it, Israel is roughly half the population of Romania, and Romania has 15,000 for domestic violence. So if you take the same numbers, that's 7,500, that means the project program it will grow by fivefold. We don't know how much it will grow. We do know domestic violence law just was approved by in the last few years, and now we're going to see how, how things unfold in Israel. But it's a very interesting and multifaceted project. We have other projects and RFPs we're bidding on in Europe and in the US, we have more feet on the ground, we have more sales people, more sales support. So we are expanding continuously with, and with every project we win, we have new technology we develop, whether it's inmate tracking that can go out on the weekends, whether it's alcohol monitoring that could also do other elements, whether it's these new Pure One, which is a, a project we developed for the US, which is a one piece unit with state of the art, long battery, long battery life, lightweight, you could charge mobile, you're not to the country, out to the wall. Whatever it is, we're just basically becoming more and more comprehensive to offer our customers a full solution. They don't need to look anywhere else. And uh, that allows us to enter more places and more regions and continue to grow with our customers. I like the story. I like you. <laughs> you're a straight yeah, up guy, right? I mean, <laughs> no, you're a straight up guy. I mean, you're transparent. And I and I do believe that you you like the fact that you are doing things that that are a positive impact on the world, right? I mean, this is a touchy subject for people, right? But it's important. It's important. I, it's important. I, I believe in social entrepreneurship together with let's say business or pure profit entrepreneurship. As long as you can find a niche where you can do both. One of our projects, Romania, that I keep talking about, fifty thousand uh, offenders trapped every month. That's up to close to a million over six years. So. There's 100, 100 and some people here working. Each one of the people here in the company, you know, is contributing to 10,000, uh, protecting 10,000 lives uh, just with this one pro one project. And there's many more, right? So the the impact is, you know, hard to phantom. And people here sometimes are working on the code and working on the, the product technology. Sometimes you want to bring them up to the, to the project level and show them what they're doing. So what we're doing here is really important. Right. So, I mean, what would you say to anybody that watches this video? I mean, how could they, how could they help 
super con? How, how, how super can they help? Uh, uh, well, it's always uh, today. There's always articles that people write. So we see we have in stocks, we have over fifteen thousand uh, followers. Uh, a lot of people write stuff that's not accurate, uh, but mostly people write good things and supportive things. Of course, anyone could write and anyone could look. We we have our we put out information very clearly and very transparently in our filings. Anyone could see that they see something they like. Um, they could share it. They could share it with other people in the community so that people are aware of what we're doing. That whether that be new projects or winning, whether that be you going from uh, you know negative nine point seven million cash flow to one point two positive cash flow within few, a few years, whether that a hundred percent growth in revenues, uh, net income flipping from minus two and a half to positive two and a half in the ninth month period this year versus last. There's a lot of significant improvements and. Um, Anyone who uh, believes and wants to share, or you know, all for that. Right, right. So you know, the way I look at it is, it's not just about, you know, it's not just about being an investor. It doesn't have to be up money all the time. Just help make people aware of the fact that this technology exists. Right. I mean, to help make our communities safer. Right. Yes. Much, much safer. Yes. Much. And, uh, people across all over the world in the Romania project, it was their first project. They never did this before. But they saw it. Like, people talked about it. People like what we're doing in other countries in Europe. And then the government in Romania liked it. And they decided to do it. And then many other companies that were local reached out to us and said, look, they're trying to do something which is perfect for your technology. And they, that's how they brought us in. So, you know, we don't have our ears on every single place in the world. We have two partnerships through the help of others who are together to do this. It's a big, big changes we're trying to make. And uh, we need help. So we're always trying to work with others in an effective manner. Right. And so uh, so one last thing real quick. I mean, in the in the States, a lot of them are mom and pop shops, right? The small operations that it, it, in each state. I mean, are, I mean yeah. now that you've got some stabilization in, in the share in the stock, I mean, you could use that as currency to maybe do some acquisitions, right? We acquired our last acquisition was of LCA in 2016. We acquired them for $30 million. That helped us a lot because after we entered California, we won $35 million in new projects, over $35 million in new projects in California. We love to do the same in other regions of the US. And there's other vendors that we work with because they buy from us the equipment that we would potentially buy. Stock is a little too low for us to want to use it a lot for acquisition. So we're trying to do creative structures where we give minimal cash and then there's a seller's note or earn out. And we are working on those. We're not in a hurry because we have very nice organic growth, as I described before, 150% over the last few years. Um, but there's opportunities out there, and we are still working on them. And uh, we could have interesting uh, inorganic growth through acquiring some of these players and bringing us to more regions in the U.S. where they have a good fo foothold and a good standing. And then we just lay on our, on our technology, which automatically brings cost synergies because they don't have to buy from anyone else. And brings offering synergies, top line synergies, because now they can offer much better solutions to the customers. We've seen that the different technologies, LCA is a reseller, the company we acquired. So we see what other people are offering. We see them right next to each other, what they're offering and what we're offering. We're able to see the huge difference in opportunity. And we want to offer the same to other vendors uh, and other resellers that are spread out throughout the US. All right. Is there anything you feel as though I, I, I have missed? Um, the debt we talked about, just I didn't have a chance to talk about the debt, I think. So, so, let, so let's talk about it. Yeah. Okay. So the debt is a, it's a question that people have. And as I said, it was, it was in the mid thirties. We, we paid down some, so now it's around 29, 30. And what's important about the debt. And I know people hear debt and sometimes they're concerned, but I think what's important is the relationship we have with your, with your creditors. And we have a relationship from 2018. So there's a debt, uh, was a problem for the creditors or for us by 2022 when it's a mature original maturity we would already have issues it's already 2024 and it's been delayed towards end of 25 will be delayed more and more and they give us you know grace in terms of using our cash instead of paying for amortization we're using our cash for our operations so as long as things continue and the relationship continues to be good and, and it is good that shouldn't cause uh, a big fear a big problem like like some fair some shareholders uh, worry about so we, we, we push it out, we pay it slowly over time with some you know, discounts and advantages and forgiveness that they give us. We know we can focus on operations. And besides that, 
everything else in the business is pretty transparent and clear. They could see that the growth and the profitability and the revenues, they could see that the market valuation of $7.5 million doesn't match properly uh, a valuation for a company like ours. Do you have any overhang with uh, warrants out there? Yeah, we do have warrants, but the exercise price is probably $8 or so, so it's not anywhere close. The, the, the stock could, could more than double before we reach any impact from the warrants. Okay. So it shouldn't worry anyone at this point, but we do have warrants out there that is also kind of a locked-in vehicle to bring the company more cash. If the stock does go to $12 or $13, then we'll have cash coming in, seven and a half, eight, nine million dollars of cash, which will help us to continue our growth. Right, right. So I mean, yeah, if it, go, if it hits the warrant, the, the strike, that's not necessarily a, a terrible thing because uh, yeah, you're going to bring Especially in some money. It's, it's really out of money right now. So if if, if, the, if there is a scenario that doesn't impact anyone, that means the stocks went up more than two or three times what where it is today, which is great for any <laughs> investor coming. Back. <laughs> right. And also, the company will get more cash, which we'll continue to use for for our growth. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna move some of my stuff off of here so that uh, we can take a look at the chart real quick. Because in all actuality, what what it does appear to me is though um, you're in a oops, not that one, this one. I'm gonna move your logo out of here. I think I'm gonna move the bowl too. All right, so. Uh, You've got actually kind of got a reverse head and shoulders pattern uh, that's developed here, but let me get this. So you were in a, a you know a downward trend from the upper left to the lower right, and but now it seems to me like you're kind of bouncing in between three dollars and four dollars, right? That's that's essentially the range that you're you're trading, and so you pretty much know that. $3 is acting as really good support because every time you get down to $3, it turns around and it bounces off of that level, right? And then you get up to around $4 and it bounces off of that. So eventually, so what? what is that? That is actually saying that there's nobody that's really in charge of the stock, not the bulls, not the bears. It's just kind of building a base, right? It's, in, it's almost in a, uh, a wait and see mode. Right now, the numbers continue to get better, and you have some more contract wins. Right it, at some point, and you have a very small it, it, you have a very small amount of shares in, in the float. Right, so a really good piece of news could m make the stock have a tremendous move in a very short period of time. Uh, we see it a lot. We have we have a new project win or a quarter lease. You could pop a 50%, 70%. Because there's a lot of retail still that goes up and down, but you know people make a lot of money on the way. Our institutional base is, is minimal right now. In the past, we had very big institutions. And the market cap was bigger. Because the market cap is a little lower, while there's many institutions lately, in the last few months, we've seen a lot more interest because of the numbers. I'm guessing people just find us on their screens and they keep reaching out. Sometimes two, three times a week, just random you know, institutions reaching out, they want to learn more about the company. They can't put in too much now, but they're starting to build their interest. And so that if, if things start to run up, which they potentially foresee, they'll be able to get in. And that will create more of a base and structure that will help the company, you know, go go just one direction in stock because it is kind of, as you said, moving around a lot. Right. Just, so, I mean, there there is a, you know, I look at it like this, being that it's it's pretty defined as to where the support is, and it's pretty divine as to where the, the resistance is. If the, the if the story resonates with you, then you know when it has its, these pullbacks to the, you know it gets closer to the three dollar level, that would be the area where you know if you're looking to build a position, that's where you dip your toe, right? And the thing you're looking for is you're looking for that break over four and it break and closing above four. Once it breaks the, that ceiling. Right, then then that will become the new floor. So, you know, I think, I mean, a company like this needs the support of shareholders that not just see it as the investment opportunity, but also see what it does for humanity, right? That gets it. And 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 because the worst thing that would would that could happen is uh you've got all these all, all these uh 
government agency or all these countries that are using the product and you know it would be it would be a, a sin to see the company disappear because they can't get any investors to get involved with the company right i mean that that to me would right. be a sin. so companies like this we support it uh we supported it even when the even when the times were tough and there weren't uh, investors when there's a big shift from the old legacy to the new business we put in four million dollars of our capital with zero interest on our family's capital to support the company we did it twice um so we you know we we think it's very important what it's doing but obviously it's much more helpful when we have a lot of investor interest and luckily as the numbers are, are good and the expansion is good you know more and more investors but we certainly wouldn't want to see a company like this that has so many touches, you know, so many lives every year disappear all of a sudden. We don't, we don't see you that. Know, when, I, when I asked you, you know, how can people help you? One of the ways people can help you is, you know, when I meet with a company, I, I immediately start thinking of who do I know that this could help? You know, whatever, whatever company it is, I start thinking about, I start going through my, my contact, my network in my head, and I start thinking about, who can who could benefit from knowing this company, right? And you can open up your network. I mean, if you are somebody that has connections within, you know, probation departments I mean, or yeah. government agencies, um, you could open the doors for these guys, right? I mean, not everybody yeah, knows that's that's all you have. That's very, that, that's very helpful. There's there's thousands of counties and there's thousands of different programs um, of probation, early intervention, sheriff, and someone has a good relationship and they're they're working or touching that. Of course, uh, it could be helpful if they if they refer us or talk about us as a so our technology is is the newest. It's, it's probably I don't want to say it's the best, but we get the highest score. We win a lot of we win a lot of the projects. A lot of people think it's the best. And uh, it's certainly something that, that every county should at least try and see for themselves. And they don't, some of them don't know about it. We don't do, uh, ad, we don't do advertisements or anything like that. It's just word, word of mouth, different counties that hear about us. Um, and so in the U.S., it's very fragmented, and it's, it's good to have that impact also in the smaller programs. Right. With the help of people. Right. And, and that's what I want to, that's what I, that's, I mean, that's what I'm doing. That's why we're talking, right? Because I want to help you get your story out. I mean, that's, that is important because I, like I said, I, I read an article about, you know, somebody, some gal getting killed because, uh, you know, somebody's using old tech that is garbage, right? And you have this new tech that, we should be using. I mean, that should be the standard. It should be the standard. It just, that's it, right? If you can't do this, if you can't provide this, this result, we're not going to use your stuff. We're going to, we're going to move to the new stuff. Right. Yeah. 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 It's a shame that we, we, we hear some of our competitors had to call back 20,000 units because they had technical issues. And, you know, it's, it's just a shame to hear that there's, you know, to be tens of thousands of people walking around with bracelets that don't work for a period of time. Because uh, they haven't invested and checked out the other solutions that are out there, because others are working really well. Right. <laughs> All right, or or not. So, what do you what do you feel as though you might have as a uh, as a potential catalyst in the next six to twelve? Uh, announcements are always great. Uh, we 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 just just like we we announced the, the national project in Israel. We also have New York and we have West Virginia, Maryland. We're going to have more announcements to continue to win and we're doing very well. Each announcement is a catalyst. We can also have uh, nice arrangements. Nice arrangements with our, uh, you know, if we, if we do any, uh, any debt pay downs or we have forgiveness, that's also very nice, you know, gains that we receive and also potential acquisitions if you can put a good, a good deal together. So our quarterly numbers have been good. That's always nice too. Nice to have together with wins and other good news and things we're doing in the business. Okay. All right, man. Listen, I'm pulling for you. <laughs> if you have anything yeah. that pops up that you think is um, you know, worth worth sharing, just 
reach out to me and, and, and I'll I'll make a spot for you and we'll give everybody an update. Does that sound like a plan? Yes, good, good. That'd be nice. And I really appreciate you helping us spread the word and all the good stuff you're doing for other companies and helping the small companies that are doing good things uh, get their, their, their message out and get their name out and, you know, you're doing really good things uh, and assisting in that. So, you know, you're, you're uh, very helpful <laughs> and I really appreciate it. Thank you for your time. And it's always great talking to you. So it's fun. It's always exciting. And I hope to, uh, to be in touch soon. Yeah, let's make let's make let's make sure we don't get that long duration spread again, right? Let, let's let's stay yeah, updated, yeah. okay? Yeah, All right, yeah. hold on one second, yeah. man. I'm I'm going to uh... thank you for tuning in to another CEO interview here at Alpha Wolf Capital today. We had Ordon Trebelsi from Supercom, ticker symbol SPCB. If you enjoyed today's interview, do us a favor. Give us a like. How about giving us a share? And while you're at it, make sure you smash that subscribe button because all of those things are extremely important to us here at Alpha Wolf Capital. And we appreciate you taking the time to do that. Until next time, stay safe. Alpha Wolf Capital wishes you the very best of success.